McKinney Smith. In 2009, while going through a divorce, I decided to jump straight into entrepreneurship. In 2012, I lost my sister and asked myself, what legacy do I want to leave behind? Since then, I've become a serial entrepreneur, helping other women publish their books, produce their podcasts, and reach their big goals to walk in their greatness. I realized the importance of sharing our stories of resilience and how it can be another's guide to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. We are blessed to be a blessing. So get ready to be blessed with an inspiring testimony. Hey, Faith Walkers, thank you for joining us on the Awaka My Stilettos podcast, where we have conversations with amazing women that are letting them step into their shoes. I help women to strengthen their resilience muscle, own their stories, and conquer their fears so they can reach their goals. But I get inspired more when I see or hear the backstory and the mindset of how she got there. So today's guests are about to bless us with their testimony. And since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. Today, we have Anna Lozano and Lindy Sood. They are founders and CEOs of Love Powered Co., the affirmation company. They are moms on a mission to power the next generation of mindful leaders and make I am affirmations common practice in homes around the world. Their affirmations have been seen on The Marilyn Dennis Show, Breakfast Television, Fox News, and enjoyed by influencers and celebrities, including... Jessica Alba, Sarah Landry of The Bird's Papaya, Jamie King, Julie Black, Cheryl Hickey, amongst many others. So please welcome to the show, Anna and Lindy. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for agreeing to come on and share your story with us. Of course. So I love, before I even get into anything, what I love about, and I think I connected with you guys first through Instagram because I've been following for a while But what I love about what you do is I'm a true believer in affirmations and true believer in anything you say after I am. So I just want to commend you ladies for what you are doing, especially bringing it to teens and kids because it is so needed and so important, especially to start at such a young age, you know, so that they can grow into that awareness of who they are. So I just want to thank both of you ladies for what you're doing. Well, thank you. Yeah, so nice. So nice to hear. So I love to start the show with an icebreaker question because I believe that as women, we have all these different titles that we go by. And I believe that there's a title that holds a lot of significance that we don't give credit for, which is our name. Because every time someone says your name, they're declaring that meaning to you. So I would love to know, do you ladies know what your names mean? I do. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Anna, do you? I'm going to Google right now. <laughs> okay, well, then I'll start. So my name, uh, my name is Lindy, but that's actually a nickname. My name is Linda, and oh. Linda means beautiful. So, but I mean, everybody calls me Lindy. So that's yeah, what it I love it. I love it. So every time someone says your name, whether they say Lindy or Linda, they're declaring that you are beautiful. Because I had Googled it, and they said Lindy means pretty, sweet, or beautiful. Yeah. So they're declaring that meaning to you every time they say your name. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's amazing. And it's funny because Anna says grace or beautiful. So beautiful as well, but it says full of grace, which is whenever I choose the affirmation card, I am graceful. I always laugh because I'm like, okay, working on it. But look at that. I thought my name means that as well. So <laughs> now every time someone says Anna, they're telling you, they're declaring to you that you are graceful, that you are beautiful. That's I amazing. It. What about you? You got to tell us. <laughs> so funny enough, the reason I even asked this question as an icebreaker question is because I grew up disliking my name. You know, kids can be cruel and they would mm-hmm. make fun of bikini and I would be called everything under the sun from zucchini, linguini, bikini, whatever. And <laughs> my parents <laughs> told me that my name meant beautiful one. And I, you know, as we all do, we believe whatever our parents tell us. But as we get older, we realize not intentionally, but our our parents do tell a lie here or there. And I started to dig deeper into the meaning of my name and it's Swahili for strength of character. Oh, nice. Both are, it's beautiful, beautiful and strength. (laughs) Thank you. I would hold on to what your parents said too. Keep it all. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) So I, I truly believe, especially as, as kids, and this is why I'm thanking you for the work that you ladies are doing is that, you know, sometimes as a child, 
you know, we're, we have these vivid imaginations and who we want to be or what we want to do. It's so clear because we're able to visualize things. But as we get older, society and family and friends and people kind of limit our beliefs or we allow them to limit our beliefs on who we become or, or what we believe because we're constantly told to be realistic or, you know, what we are capable of or all of these things. So I love to ask, what did you want to be as a little girl? Um, okay, so it's Lindy speaking. When I was a little girl, I remembered that I wanted, there's a few things that I wanted to do. And it's funny now, because if I ask my seven-year-old what she wants to be, there's a list of like 10 things. So Mm -hmm. when I'm remembering back, I wanted to be a farmer and I wanted to be on a farm that raised animals that would never be slaughtered. So I would Mm -hmm. have cows for milk. I would have chickens for eggs. You know, I would grow all of the fruits and vegetables. But also on this farm, I was going to be an artist. So I was going to be a part-time farmer, part-time artist. That was what I wanted to be. I love it. I I love it. And do you see how you said your your daughter, if you asked her, she has, you know, seven things that she wants to be. Because children, they're they're able to dream so vividly and to see pictures. And as people, we think in pictures. And their ability to capture those visions allows them to go after things that we as adults start to limit ourselves for. Totally. I see that. I totally see that. Yeah, no, I love that. And that's why we were both such big believers of vision boards because our, our mind does think in pictures. So we love that. And this is why we're so committed to this practice of empowering our kids to not lose this essence that they naturally have. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and it always reminds, and, and they remind us of it, which I think is a beautiful thing. So for me, I don't actually remember what I wanted to be, but I do remember vividly at age 12, picking up Richard Branson's autobiography and just mm. reading it cover, cover within like a, a few days and just saying, I want to be like him. I want to change the world. And, you know, that's as far back as I remember. I need to ask my parents what I wanted to be before that. But that autobiography for me changed everything. And it was at a very, very young age. And I still would love to meet Richard Branson at one point in my life. Awesome. So I want to know how you both got into affirmations. And before I even say that, I had... So I did this beautiful, beautiful uh, partnership with Revival Martin & Co. And... In it, when I opened it, there were these beautiful affirmation cards. And when I realized they were from you guys, I was like, that's amazing. (laughs) I'm a true believer in affirmations. Like my second book is an affirmation book. I live on affirmations. I've got affirmations written on the mirror in my bedroom. I've got affirmations written in picture frames. I am a true believer in affirmations. So I would love to know how did you ladies get into affirmations? Well, first of all, we are obsessed with Dana and Revival by Martin. So <laughs> I actually got a chance to see her on the weekend, and her energy is like nothing else. I swear, you just feel you feel Isn't cleansed. It infectious? She, oh, you feel cleansed. You feel pure when you walk away from an interaction with her. So, yeah, I love Dana. I love Revival and Mar- by Martin and Co. So, how we got into affirmations was very different, but um, the transformative benefits that we both realized from the practice of practicing affirmations is was very much the same. So, for me, my story began, I guess, when I was a little girl. So, I grew up in a household where my mom was on a constant quest to just figure out the greater meaning of things. And so I remember she, we would jump from religion to religion because she was trying to figure out what fit kind of what she was doing. So we'd go to a Baha'i meeting or we would go to the Unity Church. And then the next weekend, she would be taking us, I don't know, somewhere else. But where she landed was New Age spirituality. And within that, without a Uh, an overarching religion per se was she got hooked on A Course in Miracles. And within A Course in Miracles, they're all about, um, you know, affirmations. And my mom started to talk to me about Louise Hay and Dr. Wayne Dyer at a very early age. However, I wasn't very open and receptive at the time uh, for the information that she wanted to share with me. So Mm -hmm. she started to talk to me about affirmations and what that all meant. And I'm sure it planted a seed, but I didn't start practicing affirmations until I was almost at a breaking point. So for myself, 
I was in my late teens, early 20s, and I was suffering from pretty intense anxiety. And the more I talk about this openly, the more I realize that, yes, this is my story. This is my truth. But um, it's not very unique to me. A lot of people and women in particular at one point will go through something similar. So in my 20s, I I hit a pretty, pretty big low and uh, they diagnosed me with panic disorder. So I was having panic attacks. Um, At first, it was the one time and then it was, you know, two weeks later and then it was every day. And after a series of medications didn't work for me, again, this is for me. I'm not saying medication doesn't work for everybody, but it didn't for me. I realized that I was at a point in my life where I needed to make a decision of where I was headed. And I knew that that panic disorder, that anxiety, that could no longer be my story. And that wasn't in my future. So I needed to find a different way because the medication wasn't working to really get myself out of that. So my mom reintroduced me to the power of affirmations at that point. And I started to really retrain myself Um in the way I was thinking, the thoughts that I was having, have being aware of what thoughts were coming up, and then the the words that I was using. So it was all wrapped up in that time. And um, it's also when I began to discover how to create a personalized affirmation mantra that really worked for me. So um, I learned this little trick, and I'd love to share it with you and your audience. But I would take my most self-limiting beliefs and I would replace it with the antithesis of and put an I am in front of it. So Mm. my biggest, most self-limiting belief, I would say at the time, was I have anxiety. Other ones were, you know, I'm not smart enough or I'll never have enough money, which I'm sure a lot of uh, listeners can relate to. Mm -hmm. And so what I have anxiety became was I am peace. And so what I am not smart enough became I am brilliant. And so I would catch myself in this negative um, self-talk. And I got really, really good at becoming aware of it. So I would hear myself and I would stop, give love to that ego mind that was, you know, in that train of thought, but say it's not for me today. And I would replace it with the antithesis of. So The mantra for me that I still to this day, I call it my comfort mantra, is I am peace, I am brilliant, I am healthy and wealthy, I am safe, I am loved, I am protected. Thank you for my blessings. And so the benefit from this was in the moment, it would take me out of all of the mind game, thinking about the anxiety of the past, apprehension of the future, and it would draw me into the present moment. And so it was a real mindful practice and it would bring me peace and calm in that moment. But then In addition to that, my subconscious mind was listening and believing and reaffirming those thoughts and those words to be my new truth. And uh, that's kind of where my affirmation practice took flight. Wow, Lindy, I love it. Like, I'm listening to your story. And even in how I try to explain to my clients how affirmations work, your story from like start to finish, just explain it. You know, (laughs) so they say tell story self and you just basically gave the story of how affirmations work so to anyone who's listening like affirmations you know they've helped thousands or millions um, of people make significant changes in their life but for some people if they haven't internalized what they're saying if they don't feel the power behind those words then it's hard for it to like marinate into your subconscious so we have to repeatedly tell ourselves the opposite of our self-limiting beliefs, which you've done. Mm -hmm. And when you continue to tell yourself that it's like, so the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between fact or fiction. So it doesn't know the difference between the truth or a lie. So whatever you keep feeding it, it believes that to be true. So the power in affirmations is the repetition is, you know, hearing the same thing over and over again. And it's you changing because you, you are aware of what you were feeling and you processed it and you chose differently using affirmation. So you were able to like reinforce that belief throughout your life by basically, you know, suppressing it into your subconscious. So that's amazing. McKinney, I love the word you used, marinating in your subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking that. I'm taking Yeah, it. it's all yours. Sharing is caring. <laughs> So Anna, how did you get into affirmations? So from the moment that I picked up that the autobiography, I mean, there was a there was a planted seed of, you know, wanting 
more out of life. My parents are immigrant parents. So we came to Canada when I was six years old. And so it was just this desire to, you know, not necessarily achieve success, but achieve success in a, in my own definition of what success was going to look like. And then when I started my first network marketing business in 2010, that's when I really dove deep into personal development and attending seminars and Tony Robbins and, you know, learning about Louise Hay and Wayne Dyer and all the incredible, you know, grandfathers and grandmothers of the industry. So that's really when I started a conscious affirmation practice. Like I do believe that the seeds were planted way earlier on, but it was consciously choosing affirmations tied around, you know, growing a successful business, achieving certain levels of success in my business that Mm -hmm. started to work. And so the more that I would think about what it was that I was going to achieve and affirm it, and I obviously took the intentional action towards it, the more it became a reality. And so that's kind of, you know, is that reaffirmation that this works, this practice works, you have to do it consistently. And so I was hooked. So I would say consciously since 2010, but unconsciously, like way earlier on. Wow. I love that for so many different reasons. And even when you spoke to, you know, your, your personal development really started when you started network marketing and that's how you Mm -hmm. got into personal development. And although I'm, I'm going to say I'm not actively involved in a network marketing company, I dove deeper into affirmations and personal development through network marketing as well, where I was first introduced to Bob Proctor. Well, I was already, you know, I'd already watched the documentary, The Secret and, you know, follow certain things, but that was when I got to meet Bob Proctor and connect with his wife, Linda Proctor, who ended up writing the forward for my first book. But it was like through network marketing, which a lot of people may have this negative stigma towards, but they don't realize how much it helps develop you as a person. It's a personal development journey and whatever company that you're a part of, it's really just the gas that you're putting in the vehicle to get it to move. So I love that you even mentioned that point. Yeah. And you know what? I agree. And and I feel like the whole industry, the foundation of it is personal development because the, from the moment you start, it's engraved in that foundation of building the business is personal development. And I love that you mentioned Bob Proctor because so when I started in 2010, Born Rich program was was the program. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you've taken it, but I actually couldn't afford the program. And I found someone who allowed me to pay $50 a month until I paid off the entire program. And that was that wow factor. And he talks about all of this stuff. He talks about, Mm -hmm. you know, the subconscious mind and, and it's so incredible. And and I fell in love with Bob Proctor and I ended up meeting him on an airplane going to Vegas. (laughs) He was on the same flight. Awesome. And I walked up to him and we had the best conversation, but you know, that is one of those industry leaders. Like he's such an incredible mentor and coach. And, you know, Jim Rohn is someone that I didn't get a chance to meet, but these are the people that we're learning from and we're the next generation that, you know, has to continue on these lessons and, and knowledge I feel for the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you talk about the born rich program. It was Bob Proctor's book. You were born rich that started, my deep love for personal development because I read that while on vacation with my girlfriends and came back. And like I said, I'd already watched the documentary, the secret and all that stuff, but it was the practices that I started putting into place where it, I attracted the opportunity to meet Bob Proctor and meet Linda Proctor and Colleen Proctor and be connected to them as individuals. And then later end up, uh, I did the certification training. So I'm a certified Proctor and Gallagher consultant. So oh, um, I love it. I, <laughs> like I eat, sleep, breathe, live personal development. So I love it. I would love to know <laughs> with you guys, like with the, in- what was the intention when you first began the whole love powered co journey? Because I believe, especially as entrepreneurs, when you start something, sometimes the intention behind it sometimes turns out to be a li- little different than where it ends up. Because obviously not only does the market dictate where things go, but also the universe kind of lets you know where you should be. When we got together and we decided we were going to do a business together, we had both been on these personal development journeys, as we've been talking about, and uh, we were really into this new age spirituality and really becoming more enlightened. And we, our discussions were around affirmations. It kept coming back to affirmations. And we had this one moment when we were with each other and we had our kids running around and we looked at them and thought, you know, 
how amazing would it be if we could introduce our children to these tools and these best practices and these um, amazing things that we have in our lives right now that are doing such wonders for us? What if we could introduce this at such a young age? And so we actually started looking online. And believe it or not, in 2017 or 2016, when we were looking online for affirmations for kids, affirmations for moms, for, for families, for teachers, Um, really there was almost nothing available for sale. We could, like, if you looked online to just Google affirmations and you wanted to purchase something, there Mm -hmm. was nothing, especially nothing that spoke to us. So, uh, what we decided was there was a real hole in the marketplace because if we were craving it and if there was a McKinney out there that was, you know, doing personal development and wanted to introduce affirmations to kids, Mm -hmm. then it's not available. So we knew that there was a hole and we knew that we had the strengths and the skills to uh, create and bring something like this to market. And so that's where Love Powered was born. We first started with Love Powered Littles. And it was just because we had the desire to introduce our children to something that was approachable and digestible and uh, introduce them to affirmations at a young age. Wow. I, I have goosebumps as you're saying that only because I think about my three kids you know, wanting to introduce them to the world of personal development and you guys being able to fill a gap. And I know that there are a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to the show. So what advice would you give a woman that is thinking about starting her own business? Well, I'll let Anna answer that. She's taking a little video for Instagram. As I'm doing a story, I'll I'll talk, but absolutely. (laughs) Might as well just keep rolling with it, holding it down. But, um, you know, the advice is just go for it. This has been a messy journey of learning and unlearning and figuring out things as we go. And, you know, it's never going to be perfect. It's always going to be bumpy, but you have to start somewhere. And we always look back at the beginning of our journey. And it was so messy from the day that we launched. So we launched August 2017. And in September, I found out I was pregnant. And my pregnancies from the start are insane. I mean, I, I have two girls and I was nauseous for the first three months. And so I remember Lindy would come over and she'd bring bagels and then I would go nap. And, you know, that's just how it went. And then Lindy's house went through a full reno. So it was just probably the worst timing to start a company if we look back. But we just did it and we figured it out along the way. And then, you know, comes a global pandemic, March 2020, and you got to pivot again and you got to figure things out. And so it's if there's something on your heart, if there's something you've been wanting to do, just go for it. And you will if, if it's your mission, if it's your purpose, if it's your why, you will figure it out on the way. Wow. So based on, you know, everything that you guys have said in like the last few minutes, for the women listening, if you are looking to start your own business, the first thing I heard in the beginning, I believe when Lindy was speaking was you guys found a gap in the market. You found a need for a thing. You found something that you, you were able to provi- provide a solution. Um, and then Anna, you spoke to just going for it. And I think that a lot of us, especially as women, we get in our heads and we talk ourselves out of a thing and just take that action and just do it. And then, you know, you talked about you guys started in 2017 and then we also had to deal with the pandemic and all these different things. So if you have to pivot, you pivot, but you figure it out. So the journey doesn't need to be smooth. It, it's going to be rocky. Just go for it. Just go for it. It will be rocky. That's the thing. It it most likely will not be smooth. So I feel like once you already have that perspective that it's probably going to be messy, then it just becomes easier when you already know that it will be. That's what I find personally. That it's the acceptance part. (laughs) The acceptance. (laughs) That's what I found. I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for 11 years and accepting that things are going to work out the way they're supposed to work out. They may not necessarily work out how we want them to. And you know, there's a saying that, you know, you tell, tell God your plans and he'll laugh because <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just knowing what the goal is and working towards that. But everything else in between, we, it's like, we have no control over it. We, we attract what we need. Things will go as they should, but just have your eye on the goal, what it is that you desire to do. And it's also, yeah. I always say, what's the alternative? So you're working in a corporate setting, which is 
great for some people. And at the end of the day, there's challenges there too. And there's obstacles and there's problems to solve and things to figure out. So no matter where you're going in life, if, as long as you expect that there's going to be some challenges, some obstacles, and um, kind of taking a page out of your book, McKinney, uh, whatever obstacles you overcome, it's all adding to your resiliency and yep. it strengthens you in the long run anyway. Absolutely. And that's how we strengthen that resilience muscle. We go through the hard times, but we get back up. We keep pushing. Like there's, uh, I can't remember what the saying is now, but it's talking about basically like if a piece of sandpaper, you know, rubbing on a rough surface, but the sandpaper is like life, it smooths us out. So things are going to happen, but you keep going and that's how you build your resilience. Love it. Love it. So I would love to know what other adversities have you ladies had to experience to get to where you are today, whether personally or in business? I mean, uh, we could make it current and talk about COVID because this is the most recent, but we've definitely had um, hurdles that we were confronted with the whole way through our business. But with COVID, you know, we had this beautiful tool that could help so many people. And at right when we were When everything went on lockdown, we ran out of product, our manufacturers had shut down in China. And, you know, we were delayed with product, we we didn't get product in until May and June. So basically, it was a huge opportunity for us to kind of shift and think, how can we still support this global pandemic? How can we still support people and provide them with the tool that we know that can help them so much? And mm-hmm. so we offered our, our Love Power Digitals. So our digital format is essentially the same as our box set, which we sell online. The digital uh, is about $15 and we offered it for free for a period of time so that we could still support and do what we right. could. However, right. I mean, a, a big challenge would be that when you don't have product, you're not making money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a learning opportunity and we're, we're coming out of it. and. Again, the word that everybody keeps using is pivot for 2020, and it couldn't be more accurate. I would say that's the biggest hurdle that we've we've had to date in our business. Yeah, and, and I feel like every entrepreneur has had to find a way to to work through this. So I, I was listening, I can't remember to what podcast I was listening to, but it's like, this is the first time in history that we all have to do something together. Like we're all right. dealing with this together. Yes. So it's been actually fascinating to witness how small businesses are pivoting, how larger companies are pivoting, how, you know, families are pivoting and, and schools are pivoting. So it's, it's really an interesting time in history that we can all bring forth with us and learn. And we don't know what the future is going to hold. We don't know what the new normal is going to look like, but yeah, it's, it's been challenging for everybody, but also how quickly entrepreneurs especially are doing things differently. That was just really fascinating to witness. I noticed that as well, where the people who are in my network who are entrepreneurs I found were much quicker at adjusting to the pandemic. They were much quicker at finding solutions for others during this time, pivoting their business, monetizing things, being online and making a greater impact, which in turn, you know, affected their bottom line being greater. Um, And I noticed those in my network that either worked for a nine to five or for a company, their mindset in this time has been very different. They have been the ones that have been anxious because they found security in their job, or they have been the ones that if they lost their job, you know, they're in a place right now of depression or they're, you know, in that lower vibration. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so, you know, we're seeing for our company, especially, I mean, we're seeing right now an opportunity to how can we enter, for example, the corporate space to bring more mindfulness and to bring more, you know, of those mindset tools that us as entrepreneurs and and being in the personal development world have been leveraging, but maybe Mm -hmm. that's not a norm for certain, you know, companies or jobs. So I feel like, that needs to be the foundation because the future is uncertain, especially in this, in this time. So true. So true. Have you guys had any coaches or mentors that have helped you along the way? Oh yeah. We're huge, huge, huge believers in coaches and mentors. Um, not, not for the pandemic specifically, but we've had advisors, we've had, you know, really successful women entrepreneurs who have taken us under their wing. And, you know, the whole principle of collaboration versus competition is mm-hmm. we're feeling it, we're, we're living it. And 
especially, you know, launching in 2017, we felt it along the way. And it's, it's incredible. And we're doing our best to also, you know, do that for the generation that's coming up and starting their own businesses. But it's been really incredible, especially collaborating with other women. I love that you spoke to the collaboration point, because I know that, you know, there's this stigma that you know women are catty women can't work together blah 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 but I love when I see women like yourself or you know the women that I've been able to to collaborate with when we have come to that realization that together we can do so much more you know we can support each other we can leverage each other um I'm I'm big on using the hashtag I am my sister's keeper because I truly believe in amplifying other voices and other entrepreneurs and other women who are doing amazing things because it does not take from our light. And when we're able Mm -hmm. to realize that as a team, you know, you may have a strength that I don't have, and I may have a strength that you don't have, but when we come together, we can build something beautiful. You know, we can serve on a larger scale. We can help people on a larger scale. So when people come out of that competition mindset, they'll realize the rewards on the other side of it. Yeah. And it takes time. And I feel like certain industries might, you know, have different perspectives, but I don't know. I feel like most women we've spoken to have seen the shift and they see Mm -hmm. how much better it is on the other side. Right. So I think once you have a positive experience, it just allows more of that to, to happen. Absolutely. So with everything that you guys are doing as, as moms and wives and entrepreneurs and all these different titles, how do you take care of yourself? How does Anna, like, what does Anna's self-care routine look like? What does Lindy's self-care routine look like? So there's a card that we actually put in our deck and all of our decks of affirmation cards, and it's called Breathe, Move, Gratitude. And it's to get you into the space of the here and now. The reason we put this card in our decks is we envisioned you know, people in their busy lives, just going through the motions, doing the day to day, checking boxes and, um, and then kind of going, okay, now it's time to do my affirmations and jumping into that. And for us, we feel like you really need to get into that Zen mode to get into that place. And so Mm -hmm. to expand on that, for my self care, it's all about breathing, it's all about movement, and it's all about gratitude. So, you know, meditation is key. In terms of moving your body, I preparing for a half marathon right now. And every time I go out, I go for my run, it clears my head, it gives me all of the ideas in the world. And, you know, the moment I walk in the door, I'm refreshed and rejuvenated and ready to jump back in. And then of course, gratitude. So finding no matter where you are in your life, no matter what is happening, um, we can always find something to be grateful for. And when you focus on that, it's so true, but it makes everything better. So gratitude, you know, it makes what you have enough. And when you focus on the good, the good just keeps getting better. So for me, those are those are my self care practices. Wow. Okay, so breathing, moving and gratitude. Jay Shetty, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, but I love him to bits. I listen to his podcast. I've read his book. I'm I would probably stalk him if we lived in the same country. (laughs) But (laughs) but his, um, his book, Think Like a Monk, Uh, I'm going to say, open me up to more in terms of being appreciative of breathing. You know, he talked about his his journey um, as a former monk and how the young children uh, as monks are taught the first day of school how to breathe because that's something we have to do for the rest of our lives. You know, we teach our kids, you know, ABCs and how to count in the beginning. So being more... um, appreciative of that practice has definitely helped me to deal with my anxiety. Um, And then you talked about moving. I know that there are a lot of people who listen, who are, you know, in the fitness uh, area or who go to the gym and do all those things. But for those people who are listening, who are not big on those kind of things, there are simple things that people can do to get moving. Like I dedicated since pre COVID, um, I dedicated to walking five kilometers a day and just being physically active in that way has helped me deal with the anxiety. They say healthy motion equals healthy emotion. Mm -hmm. Um, And then you spoke about gratitude. And I had learned through Bob Proctor years ago, the the benefits in actively practicing gratitude, which is why my last two books are gratitude journals. But every single day, being grateful for even the little things, because there are things that we don't, or things that we take for granted that someone else may be praying for that we could be grateful for in this moment. And 
I find that when we're specific in our gratitude, you know, it's like we're showing God and showing the universe that we appreciate these things and we're opening ourselves up to more things to be grateful for. So, you know, something as simple as just waking up in the morning and being able to see the sun outside, like the little things, because they're someone who either didn't wake up this morning or someone who doesn't have eyesight. Like we don't realize we have so much to be grateful for. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you added that, that bit about the movement because it really is, it can be a walk outside. And I mean, you can do all three. If you're going for a walk, you're getting that fresh air, you're breathing it all in, you're moving mm-hmm. your body and you can pay attention to all of everything around you that you have to be grateful for. And it really does shift everything. Um, coming off of Thanksgiving weekend in Canada here, I feel we're probably all just overflowing with gratitude. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Anna, what, what does your self-care routine look like? Yeah, I love this question because, I mean, I also want to give others permission to not have a perfect self-care routine because I feel like, you know, we start podcasts and it's like, well, what are your, you know, three things that you do before you start working? And this was my perfect life pre-kids. I mean, I had a stellar morning routine. I had a stellar pre-bed routine. And, you know, I have a two and a four-year-old and I've actually given myself grace over the last four years to not be perfect in my own routines as I really focus on having, you know, building an incredible foundation with them. And so finally, I feel like I have breathing room and space to myself. And so, you know, waking up and just, if I can wake up before the kids, that right there for me is self care. And Mm -hmm. I can open up a page to my book and and read a little bit. And, you know, maybe I'll put on Abraham Hicks and just listen to a 10 minute meditation. Or, you know, if I get to a yoga class, that's something that I celebrate. So I think for me, just because I'm such a type A personality and not having my shit together has really been a practice in itself for self-care to just unwind from having to have things perfectly and Mm -hmm. trusting that I'm in the season of raising young kids. And so if I get to my self-care, then I celebrate it that day. And you know what? Maybe other days I don't get to it, but we have an incredible day as a family and I celebrate that too. So I think it's just not being as rigid Mm -hmm. around it. That has been my form of self-care, if that makes sense. I love how you spoke to not having to have the perfect self-care routine because one, I believe that perfection is toxic um, because there's no such thing as perfection. Um, (laughs) But when it comes to a self-care routine, it's like asking someone their skincare routine. You know, what, what may work for my skin may not necessarily work for yours, but knowing, you know, what product line you're using or knowing those things can be helpful. But even though you spoke to, you know, not having much of a routine, technically you kind of do because you getting up in the morning before the kids, that is you getting your me time. That's self-care right there. And in For your me sure. time, yeah. you, spoke about, you spoke about reading, you spoke about, you know, listening to um, Abraham Hicks. So that's personal development. And then if you can, getting to your yoga. So those things are it's that is your self care routine. It's just knowing to give yourself enough grace because that's what Anna means <laughs> in in not Love having it. to be rigid. <laughs> exactly, and I, listen, I know exactly what self care practices make me feel amazing. But I think when I try to do it and it doesn't happen, this is where that frustration occurs, and you have that you know preconceived idea of what it has to be. And I think that I know exactly what makes me feel good. And I know that when I practice those things, I'm vibing high and I'm manifesting more, but it's also been the detachment from it and being okay with the days that it doesn't happen. You know, if I look at the last four years and how many times I went to a gym, like, oh gosh, maybe, I don't know, not as many as I would have been before kids. And it's being acceptant of that. You know, I think that in itself is my own self-care routine. I love, I love that. I love the acceptance part. And I love how you just touched on when you feel good, you know, that you're able to manifest things. And that's part of being a super attractor. And for anyone who's into manifestation, it's understanding that you have to be on a high vibration in order to be a super manifester. It's attracting things at that level. So, you know, feeling good is a part of attracting what we want out of life. When when we're feeling low and 
for anyone else who's listening who doesn't really understand, you know, when people talk in, you know, terms of vibe or vibration, your feelings are just a label for the vibration that you're on. You know, if you're feeling good, you're on a high vibration. If you're, you know, feeling angry or sad, you're on a low vibration. So it's just understanding that it's important for you to feel good. And that's all about self-care, just making time to feel good. Love it. I think that's a mic drop right there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So on that note, before we go to the final segment, I want you to tell people where they could stay connected with you online. Amazing. Well, we're mostly hanging out on Instagram. So it's at Love Powered Co. And then our website is lovepoweredco.com. If anyone is interested in their affirmation, upgrading their affirmation practice, we are right there. Awesome. Are we able to choose an affirmation and and read it out here on the on the show? Sure. Yes, please. So we're gonna have you choose it. And then I'll, I'll hold it up and Anna can read it. So between okay. between number one and twenty nine, what's your power? What number? Five. All right. Ooh, it's a good one. <laughs> Intuition is my power. I am intuitive. I am insightful. I am aware. I clear my mind, open my heart, and I trust my inner guidance. I am intuitive. I love it. And then I we all, we, and then we have questions. <laughs> this is for us girls. And then at the bottom, we always have a question that you can journal. So it says, think of a time when you trusted wholeheartedly your intuition. How did it feel? Amazing. <laughs> always. <laughs> right. It felt in alignment. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I love it. So like, <laughs> I believe it and I receive it. I I have goosebumps right now because I have been on this journey of learning to trust my intuition more. So thank you. I will definitely be writing that out and that will be added onto my mirror affirmation. <laughs> awesome. Amazing. All right. So for the final segment of the show, I call it a walk in her wisdom. And it's just a couple of reflection questions and you share the first thing that comes to mind. So I'll go back and forth with you two. Okay. Uh, Lindy, name a book that has changed or greatly impacted your life. Ooh, Think and Grow Rich by Mm. Napoleon Hill. Perfect. Anna, if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say and why? Mm, So good. Well, how about a beautiful affirmation statement? So I am whatever comes to heart. Maybe something where they can fill it in. So I am. Mm -hmm. And then inspiring people to to affirm something within them and then why don't we just put it what's the most beautiful place in the world Woo, so many uh you know what actually california came to mind maybe it's because we're looking to expand more in the states but why don't we just awesome. put it in a beautiful location somewhere in cali <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love it okay uh, Lindy, name one of the most worthwhile investments that you've ever made. And that could be money, time, energy. I would say our first property in Etobicoke. I have to tell you a little bit of a background on this because mm-hmm. it was in a, an area that was changing around and I was imagining myself pushing a stroller. I was not yet pregnant, but I kept picturing myself in these cute little areas of Toronto and my husband brought me to this area that I was like, um, <laughs> what? <laughs> and he was like, imagine it now. And, you know, it's this duplex and we'll we'll finish the top floor. We'll rent it out and then we'll save enough that we can buy our next house and we'll keep this one. And he had this vision and I did not see it when he brought me there at all. And it turned out to be the best investment we ever made. <laughs> wow. Love it. Love it. Okay. Anna, what new belief, behavior, or habit has improved your life in the last five years? I don't know if you know this, but thanks to COVID, my family and I decided to sell everything we own in Oakville, Ontario and head west. So we just drove for nine days and we landed in a beautiful area in the Okanagan. So we're here. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah. So however we want to label that behavior, but it's, uh, we're going for it and just living our soul's purpose and and figuring it out as we go. I love it. Isn't that called a nomad or something where you can just like, I totally, we're total nomads. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Okay. 
Wow. I absolutely love that. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, that is something I've definitely thought about doing. So I'm, you're inspiring me right now. It's okay. Been, it's been crazy. <laughs> you, know, you know, and how old are your kids? Oh man. Uh, 14, 19 and 22. Wow. Okay. It would be much, much easier, <laughs> but you look like you're 20. So I don't know how you do <laughs> What? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Unexpected. That was really left field. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I, I posted them in my story today. Like they don't even let me post them much anymore. They they used to love it. And now they're like, yeah, no, thanks, mom. Um, <laughs> 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 but I post them in my stories today because, um, you know, I did a photo shoot with them this weekend where it was like their stuff, you know, their theme or whatever they wanted. So they were actually okay with those photos being posted. But even my son, who's now 14, when he was little, and social media was new to me. He used to be in every single post that I posted as a kid. You know, I'd be kissing him in the bed. We'd be like doing things, eating everything he did. I would post on social media. Now that he's 14, I go to do a story. He's like, don't you dare post that. <laughs> like, no so chance. Don't mom. see my kids. So they forget that I have them. Oh. <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Well, okay. Um, last two questions. Lindy, what have you become better at saying no to? in the last five years? And that can be distractions, invitations, family. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I think I that is, that's a big element of self-care too, is knowing when to say no, especially as women. We, we want to take on the world and we want to show everybody that we can do everything and we want to be the perfect mom, wife, friend, sister, daughter, business owner, and we take on a lot and we say yes to everything. And so a uh, big part of personal development and self-care is learning how to say no. And I think I've, I've gotten better and better at that over the years, for sure. Amazing. Love it. All right. Last but not least, Anna, what do you wish women would do more of? So good. Just, just do it. Just go for whatever it is that you desire. And that's on your heart. That's on your soul. Just, just go for it. I feel like we take care of everybody else first without mm -hmm. being selfish. And it's time for us ladies to be selfish and do what feels right for us and do it unapologetically. I love it. I just want to thank both of you, Anna and Lindy, for taking the time to join us today and sharing your journey with us. I truly, truly appreciate you ladies. Thank you so thank much. You. So Thanks for having us. No problem. And to all of you faith walkers out there, until next time, subscribe on all platforms. And don't forget to rate the show and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. Join the community of faith walkers and sign up for our weekly newsletter at awalkinmystilettos.com. And be sure to grab one of my personal development books available online everywhere. And if you could think of three people, I'm challenging you today, at least three people that would receive value from hearing Anna and Lindy's testimony, please share it with them. Feel free to screenshot this week's episode and you can tag us on Instagram. You can tag the ladies at Love Power Co. And you can tag myself at The Real McKinney Smith and continue to walk in greatness in your stilettos in a manner worthy of your calling.